Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. Last week, China was back in the news making trade deals with Sri Lanka with the arrival of Sinopec to the fuel markets, meaning the dominance uh, so far held by Sipetco is slowly slipping. This many see as a good thing after what happened last year where Sipetco, the government's uh, fuel import and distribution arm, failed to provide the necessary stocks for consumption, which we all experience. Let's bring in Dhanidhu Vitharam who's at the data board, uh, to get an understanding of the deal Sri Lanka has made with Sipetco. Danidu, good to see you once again. Thank you for being here. Now, what does uh, this agreement uh, contain? Have state assets been sold? Or what's the deal about this deal? Right, my So, uh, on prima facie, there is no state asset being sold. But I think, as you have mentioned uh, very clearly, it's about having an uninterrupted supply of fuel for the local markets. Now, the key factors I'll just go over very quickly. After uh, this, actually, after two decades, we are seeing uh, that was LIOC that came in before. This is Indian oil. And now we are seeing the third entrance into the market, the fuel market within our country, which is Sinopec. And we are also yet to see, which is what, uh, when we did contact the energy ministry, what they have informed us is uh, United Petroleum, which is an Australian company. And and RM Parks, which is a company within the United States, are also to enter into this market with a similar arrangement that so, Sinopec has. Meaning it's just not Sinopec, but there will be more? In the near, in the near future. But that, that, that hasn't been inked like what Sinopec has done. Within 45 days, which is the 20, from the 22nd, within 45 days, uh, Sinopec will start their operations within our country and we'll see it uh, happening with the, around the country. Now, that was the, it's, it's under 20 at least, 150 full stations as of now. I think this was the same arrangement that happened with Elias in the uh, very beginning. Danidu, if I may ask, are those 150 odd uh, stations, uh, they've uh, constructed it or? Are they taking it from someone else? So this is what's going to happen, Mice. They are going to pay the CPC for storage facilities. Uh, they, they are going to function with the CPC, but the profit from this specific enterprise is going to go to Sinopec. But they have in the agreement is that for a period of one year, the profit should be retained within our country. And again, for a period of one year, as you have also mentioned uh, before, uh, we will, they will not be relying on the local banks for foreign currency, foreign exchange, which was the clear issue that happened uh, last year, to uh, avert th both of those issues. And as an auxiliary factor, Mice, we see that Sinopec will now be making huge investments in our energy sector as we move forward in order to create not only have their fuel stations here, but to expand the energy sector within our country. Indeed, uh, some see this as a good move, but then again, uh, uh, I, like you said, state assets have not been sold, so that's that's what's more important. Um, I think pri uh, public-private partnerships are more important at this uh, moment as Sri Lanka's economy is trying to get its bearings uh, back together. All right, Dhani Dutanabasam, as always, thank you. Joining me now is the Sri Lankan ambassador to China, Dr. Pali Thakona. He's actually in Kandy today. Why? Well, he's been awarded a doctorate from the University of Pera. Dr. Uh, thank you for very much once again. Uh, good to see you. And let me be one of the first to congratulate you. Thank you for taking the time to speak to me today. Finally, Doctor, we see that China has resumed trade with Sri Lanka again. And Sinopec entering the fuel market looks uh, pretty positive. Is this move in the right direction? First of all, Mahesh, uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. Uh, and let me say, uh, express my gracious thanks uh, for your kind sentiments. I feel truly humbled that the University of Peradenia has sought to con uh, confer this seminal honor on me. But getting on to the question, China has always been very sympathetic to Sri Lanka. Uh, now we see some concrete movements as uh, the converting that sympathy into tangible results. Sinopec has signed an agreement with Sri Lanka to enter the Sri Lanka market in a significant way. There are other major companies also who have expressed uh, interest in entering the Sri Lanka market. As you know, uh, for two years, Nothing very much happened because travel was not possible due to the lockdowns and other COVID-related restrictions. But now uh, the movement has resumed. There are many Chinese delegations visiting Sri Lanka. And I could say that there are many Sri Lankan delegations visiting China. I hope that uh, as a result of these interchanges, Sri Lanka will be able to benefit from the continuous engagement that uh, myself and the embassy have had with Chinese businesses and Chinese authorities. There are other big companies 
uh, I'm confident that these other big companies will also enter the Sri Lanka scene, both uh, for trading purposes as well as for investment purposes. Uh, in fact, I believe that if we succeed in uh, getting these companies to come here, there will be investments uh, in excess of about five billion US dollars. Indeed. Uh, doctor, what about the port city? Uh, China made a heavy investment in order to get the port city made. They did all the hard work initially, but now it's just a pile of sand next to Gulf is green. Are we to see any kind of input and investment by China on this? As I said before, uh, Colombo Harbour made a serious commitment to invest $500 million in the, uh, the proposed financial center in the Colombo port city. This was about 12 months ago. Uh, progress slowed down considerably due to the COVID-related restrictions and also due to the political unrest that swept the country last year. But now that we have returned to normalcy, in fact, Sri Lanka is as normal as it has ever been, uh, we can expect them to resume their interest. I'm confident that uh, this investment will go ahead. There is also uh, the possibility of Yunnan Infrastructure uh, Corporation uh, will be investing in the Colombo port city. There have been other companies which have expressed interest in uh, getting, engaging themselves in the development of the Colombo port city. Uh, of course, there is no denying that the Colombo port city is situated in a locality that is unmatched in the Indian Ocean region. It sits next to India, uh, which is a booming market. Uh, then uh, the Middle East is within easy reach. So is Africa. Africa would, uh, is expected to be the next uh, boom area of the world. And then to the east, we have ASEAN and Australia. Uh, one could expect if we play our cards right, play it cleverly, that Chinese companies will uh, prefer Sri Lanka to any other location for their offshore uh, uh, branches. Uh, now, the location plays a big role, but location is not everything. There are other competitors and serious competitors in the Indian Ocean region vying for the Chinese yuan. Uh, I was about to say dollar, but it's the yuan that uh, dominates the world at the moment. Uh, so I, I believe that at this stage, we need to play our cards very carefully and very cleverly uh, to attract the Chinese investors. They are looking for opportunities to expand overseas. Uh, I would say not overseas, abroad, uh, mainly because the Chinese market is reaching a point where their large corporations need to do what Western corporations did a hundred years ago, expand around the world. Uh, they are doing so in, in Europe, they are doing so in Africa, uh, and Sri Lanka is politically and geographically well suited for any of their expansion plans in the Indian Ocean region. Uh, we need to be very clever, very smart, and uh, work hard at attracting them. We need to create that degree of confidence that any investor will be looking for when they go to a new location. We have to do that and, and I hope that we will do so. Absolutely. Uh, doctor, now there's another fact that we are mostly interested in uh, to know about. It is uh, with regard to the debt restructuring and China's willingness to do that since it's uh, a demand made by the IMF. So where are we on that? Uh, well, I can't go into the details because these are the details are being negotiated among the parties at the moment. Uh, but what can I, can I can say is that China has been very sympathetic to Sri Lanka's cause. It has said that it will stand by Sri Lanka. Uh, I'm very confident as the ambassador of Sri Lanka and China that we can trust China to stand by us as we go along the process of restructuring our debts or repurposing our debts. Whatever we look at it, I'm confident that China will stand by us. Uh, I'm afraid that 
I'm not in a position to go into the details as the details are being negotiated by the relevant authorities of the two parties. Absolutely. Uh, well, we have to leave it at that. Uh, that was the Sri Lankan ambassador to China, Dr. Pal Thakuna. Appreciate it. A short break now. When we return, we'll find answers to the liberal field question. Sri Lanka's debt is Chinese debt. Is there a truth to that? This is the State of the Nation. Back in a moment.